Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing how to make a stencil using the Aura Mask 813 material. And I am making a sign to decorate for Valentine's Day. And I'm going to be adding paper flowers to the top of the mason jar using my Cricut machine. So I'll be posting a video on that soon. I'm going to start off by doing a coat of white paint over a wood panel that I found at Walmart for around $5 and it is size 10 by 10. I'm using Waverly chalk paint. I bought this at Walmart and it was a little over a dollar. I shake up my paint and dab a sponge brush into it and then I start painting the panel. I would love to hear if you guys have a stencil technique that you use. There's so many different ways to stencil with paint and I would love to hear how you prefer to do yours. In my Cricut Design Space canvas and I am going to upload my SVG and I'm using this mason jar here and I downloaded this off of Etsy it was one dollar and I am going to click on insert images okay so now I am just gonna make this bigger and then I'm also going to be writing uh, love and put that inside of the mason jar. And this is a Valentine's Day craft. I just want to make something for decoration in my house. So I'm going to click text. And then the text that I'm going to be using, I'm trying to think how you say it. It is a script font and it's called Luradilla. I actually can't remember where this came from, probably from defont.com because that's usually where I download my fonts from. And I'm going to type in love. And then I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to make it bigger. And then I want to weld these together. Whenever you have a script font, they're going to be spaced out. So you want to put the letters together and then weld it. And what I used to do was ungroup and just move it. And someone had commented on one of my videos and said she likes to do the letter space and she moves it closer and then it makes it easier to line it up. So she starts off with the letter space. I'm going to try this. And then you can ungroup it and then you can kind of move it around a little bit how you like it. But it just makes it kind of easier to make sure it's all lined up. And I might actually move it a little bit though. I'm going to move it down. Okay, I like how that looks. So I am going to highlight over all of these letters. You can see that they're each one layer right now because I ungrouped it. And this time I'm going to weld it together and I'm going to make it all one image. And then I am just going to, this is going to be in my mason jar. Now when I was looking at this design, I didn't like this little piece here because it didn't really work with my love uh, image. So I'm actually going to move this up a little bit and make it smaller. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I am going to use the contour button to do that. So first what I'm going to do is duplicate this. And I love using the contour button if I want to change my image somehow. And it also is, I think of it as kind of like an eraser. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to erase everything but this little line here. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to click on contour. And then I'm going to click on everything except for that piece. And this is the piece right there, so I'm just going to skip past it. Okay, and then you can hit the X or you could just uh, click off to the side here. And now you can see that we have just that piece. So now for this one, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to erase just the piece. So I have it selected. I'm going to click on Contour and I'm going to find that little dash there and just select that and I'll click to the side. So now what I could do is I could move this over here. I can make it smaller 
and I'll just kind of slide this around here. And I think that actually looks pretty good like that. So now what I'm going to do is I want to select both of these. You can see that it's two layers over on the layers side here. So it's two layers and I want to weld this also and just make it one image. So I am going to click on weld. And then you can see that these are both welded together. They're both one image. So now I'm going to move my love and I'm just going to position it inside of the jar. And I think that looks pretty cute. Let's see, I might make the love a little bit bigger. Okay, so I think that looks good. Now I want to make sure that this is centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, I want to select both of these layers. So I'm just going to click select all. And I am going to go to align. And I am going to click on center horizontally. And you can see it just barely moved the word love, but it puts it in the center of the mason jar. So I like how that looks. So I am going to make it. But before I do that, I want to attach both of these because if you click on make it, then it'll be it will this love won't be centered inside of the mason jar. It'll probably move it up to the side. So if you select all again and click on attach. That'll make sure that it'll show up just like this when you click on make it. So you'll click on that. Sometimes I like to move this down just a tiny bit. Sometimes I worry about it getting cut off. And then that looks good there. Then we're going to click on continue. So I have my dial set to custom. And then I will, you can hit browse material, but I already have it on my favorites because I use this quite a bit. But I can show you how to search for you search search for it. So if you click on browse all material, you'll just go to the search menu and you'll type in vinyl stencil. And then if you hit enter on your keyboard, oh maybe it's stencil. Stencil. I'm just going to select stencil. So stencil vinyl, vinyl is what I use. And you can see that I have a little star there. And it's really convenient because all you have to do is click on it. You don't have to browse for the material. So I'm going to select this. And then I'll show you on my Cricut how I do the rest of this. I am using Aura Mask 813 for my stencil. And I bought this off of 651vinyl.com. I place the stencil on my mat and load it into the machine. While my machine was cutting out the stencil, I did one more coat of white paint on the panel. When you're weeding a stencil, you don't want to weed like you normally do for a vinyl decal. You want to weed the design part because this is where you will be painting. And you want to be careful weeding to make sure that you keep all of the center pieces of the letters down. I usually just take my time to make sure that I don't weed something that I want to keep. And I almost forgot to weed out the piece that I had modified in Design Space. Next, I take my transfer tape. I am absolutely loving the Duck brand clear contact paper. I bought this off of Amazon for $8, and you can find it at Walmart also for the same price. This picks up the vinyl very easily, and I just absolutely love it. I'll link this down below if you are searching for a good transfer material. I place my transfer tape on top of the stencil and just varnish it down. I take the transfer sheet off and the stencil should pick up onto it. If it doesn't pick up part of the stencil, then put it back down and press against it again. I usually press my clear transfer paper on my desk or my jeans a couple times before I apply it to my stencil because it can be a little too sticky. But I forgot to do this this do this this time. <laughs> uh, do that this time. So when I do that, it usually picks the stencil up even better.
Then I position my stencil onto the board. I like to use my measuring tape to make sure it's in the center and I just lightly set it down so I can pick it back up if I need to reposition the stencil and then I just completely stick it down onto the board. Then I take my clear transfer sheet off. I always pull it downward while I take it off and it came off pretty easily. When you're doing a stencil, you want to make sure that you press down on each part that is going to be painted. You want to make sure there is no air bubbles or gaps in the stencil, so this way you can prevent bleeding of the paint. You can apply Mod Podge before you paint onto your stencil, but just make sure that the Mod Podge is all the way dry before you apply the paint. And I have had luck without Mod Podge, so I have been doing it without it. I'm using Ballet Slipper Chalk Paint from Walmart for my stencil color. I also like to use these foam brushes for my stencil. I always recommend to dab the paint onto your stencil with these instead of using brush strokes. I like to use the backing of my stencil material for my paint, so I just pour a little bit of paint onto that. You want to make sure that you dab off some of the paint so it's not super wet when you start uh, doing your stencil and this will just help prevent the paint from bleeding through. And then I just start dabbing the paint onto my stencil. You want to make sure you don't get any of the pink outside of the stencil. You can add painter's tape if you would like to help prevent that from happening. You can also use vinyl or contact paper for stencils. If you want to see a tutorial on how I use either one of those materials, let me know in the comments and I would be happy to do that. I do one more coat of paint, then I start peeling up the Aura Mask stencil. I waited until the paint was almost all the way dry. This chalk paint dries really fast, probably within about 10 minutes, so I waited until close to then to take off the stencil. These stencils are just a one-time use. You are not able to reuse them. I take my weeding tool to go in and take out the rest of the stencil. The chalk paint works really well for crisp lines with stencils. The only thing I don't like is it'll leave a little residue behind. You can take an eraser and get rid of the dried up flakes by just brushing it away. Here's the final look. Give me a thumbs up to let me know if this was helpful. Also let me know if you have any video requests for me and subscribe to my channel if you are new and I will see you in my next video.